she said the inspector had been out the day before. So this was last Tuesday I was in. Yeah, and President's Day was uh, Monday. And the inspector was there Tuesday, so Wednesday I went in for the again, and because uh, she called me that they had a <clears throat> one coming up next month. So I thought I was going to go in and look at the um, uh, apartment and sign the lease and not have to. Uh, I didn't know she'd just call me and do all this all over again, filling out papers and stuff, which is ludicrous. Anyway. Uh, the point is that Donna, the receptionist, was sitting outside the door the whole time. The door is open to where I'm talking to Jennifer, the manager, who they all been a part of this. <clears throat> and she's deliberately singing, and she's not singing a tune. She's going like. Uh huh. You know, you you'd have to hear it. <laughs> I mean, you knew what she was doing, I, and, and for you not to have ever done anything to these people, any of them, other than my money, and all that went with it when they kidnapped me, and it didn't stop through the years, has come in to make their life better while they made my life a living hell. And by the way, the FBI back in eighty. Uh, or 79 actually told me that. I thought, well, my life already is a living hell. But um, here I am uh, the other day back, and I filled out the papers, and I said, well, are you going to show me the uh, uh, apartment? She said, well, the woman's still in it. I don't think so. She, her last day is March the 14th, and she doesn't like the idea of going into assisted living. So no, I think not. And she says, by the way, and this is the woman who knows that I'm allergic to chemicals, this whole thing that I just put on the tape, that they've used my illness, uh, immune disorder. I'm allergic to chemicals, some chemicals, especially when I'm soaked in them deliberately in my apartment. And you have to leave as the only resort, pick up and move. Uh, she said, by the way, the apartment will be brand new. I said, oh, and she says, well, because the building's not brand new. She says, well, we just ordered the sink and the cabinets, I believe. She said sink and cabinets. She said, uh, all of it, it'll have to be painted. So in other words, this is a joke. She totally knows the background on me being sick. She totally knows that why I ran before, uh, had to break the lease and just to save my life and go from one place to the other, bounced around being so. So she knows all this, and it's a joke to them. And she says, um, uh, I said, well, I, I mean, I knew then none of this was going to stop until the people doing this, which is the feds and the law enforcement, unless it goes into a court of law and I'm still alive, it's not going to stop. I'll die because I can hardly get around. It's affected me, my whole body. Man, my immune system uh, fights itself. So this is a joke that she's called me in. I live from day to day almost penniless. Uh, it takes everything I have to pay for the rent here. And I have to get radar, which is a van, which costs me. So I went over there for nothing. It was a joke. She called me in. I can't see the room. It's next month, and maybe uh, I can move in. They're going to put the cabinets in, so I can move in in a few days. Well, they're putting brand new carpet. They're painting it, the sink and uh, cabinets and all of that. She said everything was new. I can't move in there. It would probably be, even if they didn't come in and put chemicals after I moved in, it would be a couple of weeks at least. So she's called me in for no reason other than just to harass me. So I walk out the front door, and uh, she's going to let me know. So there was no reason for me to come in there and fill out all this other stuff. It was almost the same. She could call and find out the, the little bit of income I have. She had that on her hand. She can make a phone call. So anyway, I walk out front to get radar. It's the van. It's not there, and I sit there, and up walks Carol Rogers Tiger. 
uh, that I put on the prior tapes who told me that uh, I was paying for my family's crime. And she's still living there since 06. And she tells me that the woman, um, and you have to go back on these tapes to find out, that in October when, November, excuse me, of last year, when they told me they wouldn't have an apartment for, in other words, they were telling me to go to hell, Jennifer was, uh, for five years, and the, the man that I told you about that I know, he's in law enforcement, said, well, maybe they'll have somebody die. Well, she walks up to me, uh, this woman that stole my apartment, still got it, uh, at Edinburgh. She walks up and starts, uh, she's just gotten off the metro bus, and I'm waiting on radar because I can't get on metro. Um, I can hardly get around. Anyway, she walks up, Carol does, and um, it, it's kind of rough seeing someone, and, and they walk up to you, and she starts telling me, well, I, I, I can't even, these people are totally aware of what they're doing. Um, she's talking about one of the feds was, I don't even know what she meant, but evidently they have this ongoing thing trying to find something on me. I guess to counteract if this ever comes about and the truth is put out in the press or, or wherever the world would be the better place. So that I don't run out of time again, she was standing there, and, well, she told me that the woman had died. By the way, excuse me if I'm jumping around. The reason I was called in then, I can tell you why, is the game that's being played. The woman was killed, just like the person said, maybe somebody will die. They know when somebody's going to die. And Jennifer thought it was a joke. She, she's doing what she's told to. It's a joke to do this to me. Uh, so anyway, she was told when the woman died to call me, and uh, I go in, and I don't take it because of what she said, that they just spray me and use chemicals all over again. Now she's called me back. The other day I go in, Wednesday, this Wednesday, and uh, that would have been what, the 19th, yeah. And uh, it was just a joke that I go in. And uh, you got her secretary out there humming. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's silly. And somebody here where I'm living said, well, it was disrespectful, at least. So, um, I mean, it's all a joke that they can do this to me. My life is exactly that. I live in hell. But anyway, Carol Rogers walks up, Simon, that had still had my apartment because she's lived pretty good from 06 when she stole it's what she did and uh, she told me the woman had died and then I said well uh, they brought me out here today because a woman's leaving next month and uh, going to assisted living and uh, Carol said well what apartment is it and I told her and I, I think that was a lie the way Carol reacted but um, Carol stood there and lied to me and said she didn't know Terry Sawyer when I was with Terry Sawyer back before I moved into Richfield. Now, he's going to part the law if I get anything, and I'm soaked, but I don't get anything unless they're the ones that paved the way. Um, so she lied to me. Uh, Terry was taking me to Richfield, I think, and... Um, he deliberately pulled up in front of the library, and guess who's there? Carol Rogers, Simon. And this is in 08, and uh, they knew each other. It was a joke. I thought, my God, um, she was standing there, and Terry and got out, and, and um, it's like they're old buddies. And Carol said, after I met her one more time, I was on the bus, and she was on it, the Metro back then. I could still ride it. She said, um, she said, let me make it clear that this is the only time I've been to the library since 06 uh, when you and I came here. So the point was that she knew, which by that time I knew she knew Terry Sawyer, she deliberately made the trip up. So where am I going with this? She's standing here lying to me and said, oh, well, that was the only time she ever met Terry Sawyer. Then she starts giving me a spill on Robert, 
uh, who's the federal, uh, who's the um, 